Well, as Canada marks Black History Month, the annual Black Arts and Innovation Expo in Toronto is putting its focus on the next generation of black leaders. Our special guest at the expo is the late Bob Marley's granddaughter, Denisha Prendergast, who will be bringing her strong voice and leadership to young people here in Canada. She's also our guest in your morning studios today. Thanks for being here. No problem. Thanks for having me. Oh, all right. You are a citizen of the world. You have taken a journey that has led you many places, including to here in Toronto, where you are right now studying at Ryerson University. I am. I want to know, first of all, what did you learn uh, about yourself here in Canada? Wow. What did I learn about myself here in Canada? Ah, the, the, this, this word is very popular right now, um, immigrant. Mm -hmm. But I, I have a different perspective of being an immigrant in, in Canada. It's actually a beautiful thing. You know, you meet different people from different perspectives around the world and you realize there is community in the sense of belonging everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's one of the things that I've, I've learned from Canada as well as how to deal with winter. How to dress well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no joke. <laughs> it is no joke. Uh, Denisha, you were in a documentary a while ago where you uh, talked about a serious car accident that you had. Uh, you survived the car accident, and you said you realized what your mom had always been telling you about the crown that was on your head. What did that mean? Hmm. You see, in, in, in Rastafari culture, we believe that the dreadlocks are almost like antennas to the universe. So they receive both positive and negative energy. And which is one of the reasons why we cover our dreads because we don't want to kind of be all over the place. When I had that car accident, it, it shifted my journey. I was young, 18 years old, you know, first car, flashy car, big rims, big sets, you know, on TV, on billboards everywhere. And the car accident helps to stabilize my understanding of what we can use our platforms for. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a dream while I was unconscious of my great-grandfather, who is my grandmother's father, who taught me to play the piano. And he sat with me on the journey um, and told me to focus because there are great works to do, you know. So, yeah, that car accident right around the time when I started to grow my locks, it definitely changed mm. my life, but in a positive way. There's a real focus uh, um, during Black History Month this year, uh, not so much looking back and celebrating the leaders of the past, always important, but looking ahead to leaders of the future. I know that Marcus Garvey is a big figure in your life, but who do you see, I'm curious, as a, as a young woman with a, a solid pat platform beneath her, as, as the leaders of the future? Who, who do you have your eye on? Who are the next Marcus Garveys in the community? Wow, that's a serious question to ask. Um, I know it's early. <laughs> I know, and it's so early. Um, you know, to be very honest with you, as I travel, I think about Garvey very often. I realize what he was doing when he was doing it. In a day like today, we have social media, so we have millions of followers. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey had millions of followers in a day when there was no internet. You know, so in a day like today, who are we? What can we use our platform to do? Because we have millions of followers, but what are we saying to them? So you ask who, who do we see out there with what woman is using her platform? I would say me. Not trying to compare myself to Garvey in any way, but accepting that I am also trotting that road. Everyone is their own Marcus Garvey in a sense. Yeah, we have to be. We, and we also have to be our own historians, you know? Speaking of history, I want to delve into your family history a little bit. You know, we introduced you as the <laughs> granddaughter uh, of the late, great uh, Bob Marley. Growing up as a child, did you... Did you understand who he was to the rest of the world? No, I can't say that I, I, I did. Now I do um, a lot more. I have a lot more context now. But growing up, you don't realize that your, your life experience is different from other people. You know, I grew up on tour, traveling around the world, meeting different kinds of people, seeing how music united people beyond language and geography. Um, that was normal for you? That was normal. You know, I, I never, racism and, you know, all of those different insecurities within humanity started to appear later when I had to come out of the circle of my family. You and know? speaking of the rest of your family, who is this? That's my nana. You That's have her smile. <laughs> I do. I know. She's so amazing. She's like a butterfly. That's me and that's, that's my little cousin. Yeah, that's us from the documentary right there. 
It my... is an amazing piece. Uh, oh, this is Uncle Ziggy in, in Toronto a few, a few months ago. That's a great photo. I know, right? Look at those big smiles, all those teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my 21st birthday. That's my great-grandmother in the background. She was the first one at the party and the last one to leave. I love it. That's Bob's mom in the background. And yeah, this is just a few of us. Like, my, 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 my family is huge. I'm the eldest of the next generation. I'm sure there are over 100 of us by now. They're all looking up to you too now. Wow, I, yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. But yeah, it's, it's a good feeling though. Um, now that I have found my footing, now that I understand how to help them to understand the world. Because having a figure like Bob Marley and Rita Marley be your grandparents, mm -hmm. The expectations can be very intimidating, um, and it can also decide your life if you're not if you're not sure of the road you want to tread. I'm not a musician by choice. I mean, I can sing a little. <clears throat> <laughs> we'll hold that for the next interview, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you I'm are using... a talented singer and actress. People should know that as well. Yeah, um, but I'm using my platform right now to share stories with using film. Um, yeah, I think. We have to do as much as we can with all that we can for as long as we can. I love seeing how you've woven in your family legacy, created something of your own, and you're carrying it into the future. Thanks, Denisha, for being here today. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. And a reminder, Denisha will be speaking at the Black Arts and Innovation Expo in Toronto, February 25th. For more information on that, you can visit our website, yourmorning.ca.